Hello and welcome to the instructional video for the 2020 Chasson Premium uh, 630. Uh, this walk around or instructional video is to give um, the customers a uh, an overview of how the systems uh, work on the vehicle. Uh, please bear in mind that this is a specific customer vehicle so there may be some um, slight spec changes or additions that the customer has uh, ordered. If you want to know about the standard specification or extras available please contact one of the uh, sales team. So like I say this is the uh, premium uh, iteration of the 2020 Chasson 630. So first of all we're going to do the outside of the vehicle then we'll move to the uh, inside. There are going to be manuals that will show in detail how all the systems work and this again the video is to give a brief overview. So first of all opening the bonnet we have the engine key which we open it goes into the slot at the front of the vehicle we turn left to release the um, latch and then right uh, which is the second stage and then we can lift the uh, the bonnet. Underneath the bonnet there is not a lot that you need to uh, know if you ever need to jump start it we have the terminal here for the positive and then the loop on the engine block here which is the negative so the red wire goes on this and then the black wire on this if you ever need to jump start over to the left hand side we have oil and washer fluid uh, to put the bonnet down all we do is just release it and it will click closed as we're moving uh, round uh, the vehicle the first um, flap that we come to is for our, our um, external gas point and then next to the external gas point is also our gas locker uh, on this particular vehicle this has the gas low system uh, and the gas low system is a fixed refillable um, gas bottle so basically we have a regulator which then goes to a gas pipe, often known as a pigtail, and then because this, are, and then that would usually go into a normal bottle. Because this is a gas low system, we then have another pipe which runs to our uh, external filler nozzle. To fill up, all we do is take the cap off. This then has a bayonet fitting, um, which will then be used, which is standard for UK LPG or auto gas. We put it in and twist it, and then we can fill it up with gas. For filling up with gas, please ensure that the uh, bottle is um, closed as per the gas law um, instructions and the instructions uh, are in the manuals and can be found online and we would ask that you look at them. There are holes in the bottom of the gas locker, please make sure these aren't covered because if you do have a gas leak it will then drop out of the bottom of the van. To allow gas into the van we just turn um, the bottle um, all the way uh, to allow gas into the van. As you can see here there's a specific sign which is very important and that means that there's gas off at the bottle when you drive so we turn it all the way to off when we're driving uh, for safety. If you want to store stuff in your gas locker that is fine but just make sure that you don't store anything that could puncture uh, the bottle. When you're closing the uh, gas locker as well make sure that the pipes are in and not kinked. To lock the doors or the outside lockers, if you notice what we do is we close the door, twist the handle which then puts, uh, tightens the seal and then we get our locker key, there's two um, come with the vehicle and then all we do is turn the key and then push the um, handle in so it is flush. On this particular vehicle is also a Fiamma awning and this is what we call an awning or a sun canopy. You need an awning pole, which is um, actually in the inside of this vehicle, which hooks onto the um, loop on the right hand side. Basically what we do is we wind it out just as far as we need to reach it, drop the legs that are hidden inside the front of the valance or the box, and that will then take the weight of the awning. And then we can walk the awning out. It's a bit too windy today for me to put the awning out. And again, please be um, aware that awnings and wind do not mix. Um, so don't use it even in, unless it's the very slightest of breezes because it will blow the awning over the van. Again, full instructions for the awning can be found in the vehicle. Um, these vents here are for your fridge. Make sure that they are not uh, jet washed. And if you're going to be using the vehicle in winter conditions where there's going to be driving rain, you might want to get winter covers um, to protect that area. Behind the driver's 
uh, side rear wheel, you'll find a little sticker which denotes our uh, waste pipe. So you can see there's the waste pipe and this is how we operate it. So to close we push in and to open we pull out. We've left some water in here, it's obviously clean just from our pre-delivery inspection but that just shows that we can over the vehicle and then our waste. That is in essence our salt bit or foodie water um, that is evacuated from there. You can get a fitting to fit a pipe over it if you want to drain straight into a drain but most sites have some sort of um, grid that you can drive over, just drain down um, and then you're fine. This locker here is for your toilet cassette toilet cassette we lift the handle and slide out and then we can use empty um, empty it uh, from this pipe here and then when it goes back in we just make sure it is put in and that it is um, located securely uh, for the toilet cassette you need to make sure that you use um, either some blue fluid which goes directly into the cassette itself or you use the toilet sachets uh, which go down the toilet don't put blue fluid down the toilet because it will stain um, the toilet bowl and you need to make sure you do have some sort of chemical in the toilet system uh, for it to break down solids um, and to smell nice as well on the other on, finally on the side of this vehicle we do have the awning light which is switched on from inside moving to the back of the vehicle we have the garage all the doors do have um, uh, latches that hold them back but be careful in high winds when plugged in, there is a light here, won't work when we're not plugged in. We have power, we have 12 volt and 240 power. A set of external silver screens, and it is also heated via this heating vent here. The pads that are in this vehicle are to make up the lower bed. Um, and then there is also access from inside the vehicle, which will show uh, from inside. There are fixing points as well. Please be careful with fixing points. If you're going to use ratchet straps, make sure the ratchet straps are not pulled too tight or else they will pull the fixings out of the bottom of the garage uh, floor. And bungee cords are obviously the best. At the back of the vehicle, there are already fixing points should you want a bike rack fitting. And at the top, we have the um, reverse camera. Moving around to the passenger side, we have another access to the garage. This is a full height garage on the 630. And again, there are shelves that we can just latch to make extra storage uh, if you don't want to store skis or anything tall. And again, this just gives you a view from the other side. As we move round, um, there's not as much on this side of the vehicle, but we do have the hookup point. So that's where we plug in our hookup cable or EHU cable. We also have an external uh, shower point which plugs in there's a shower holes inside which I will show you and then this here is the flue um, or the vent for the boiler it is uh, meant to have a cover on this and I'll just find that before the customer picks it up um, basically that is your chimney for the uh, boiler system so the vent needs to be on when it's in storage or traveling but it is very important that it is taken off when you're using the boiler especially if you're using it on gas if you're using it on gas it will not fire the boiler will not fire um, because it can't breathe um, a little tip which i will tell you inside is if you do try and fire the boiler on gas and you try it a couple of times and then remember that you've not taken the cover off it will then you will then take the cover off and it still might not fire that's because you might have overgassed it because you've been obviously squirting gas into the system by turning it off and on to clear that all we do is blow into the hole which will clear any gas and then try it again just a little tip uh, and it's something that often happens and then finally in the main part that we need on this side of the vehicle is our fresh water system so again it tells us that we have a drain which is a drain for our fresh water and also it tells me that we've got a blue tap which tells me where we have a fill up <clears throat> so we can undo the hatch first of all we have all our electric systems so we have our fuses and our trip switches the same as what on a domestic system and then we have our fresh water tank sorry about the brightness fresh water tank so this hatch here is for access to clean to fill up we pull this um, spout out undo food grade hose pipe in and fill it up you'll know when it's full because it will drain out 
You've also got a small valve here which you can see matches this one and that's a maximum and minimum level. Basically how this system works is we do not like to travel with full water. We only like to travel with usually uh, 20 litres. So to do that all we do is lift the um, let lift the let lever up into the mini level so it is straight up run the pump or run a tap and then that will pump the water out down to 20 liters should you want to fill then the tank up again to maximum we just drop the um, lever down and it will let you fill the full tank up then we need so that's how we drain out to 20 liters we also will need to drain down the whole system when we're not using the van so if you look under here we have this blue pipe that you can see now which is the 20 litre drain and we also have another one just a bit further back with a black cap on and that's how we drain the whole water system it is a 15 mil plumbers push fit and all we do is pull that off and that will drain the whole water tank and then finally on the outside of the vehicle we have we open the passenger door and then we have access to our diesel and add blue uh, add blue is an additive for emissions the vehicle will tell you when it needs filling up and I would advise that you fill up when uh, advised um, because the vehicle will not start if it runs down to zero so that's it for the outside of the vehicle now let's have a look inside moving to the inside of the vehicle first of all we have the habitation door which has a, a bin and also a blind um, and then a fly screen uh, just on the inside of the uh, of the door remember on this is a premium model so it comes with central locking as standard and central locking for the habitation door which is worked from the main key uh, the bottom button is for the habitation door um, and the middle button is to lock everything and then the top button uh, is to open everything a really important um, thing to note for the keys and for the Ford and Chasson system is that this has a deadlock system and because you have central locking it does mean that you can lock your keys in the vehicle and it does this after a period of about 45 seconds so it's very important that you make sure you keep your keys with you because if you leave them in the van the van or the motor will lock itself as a safety uh, procedure so let's close the habitation door and then we'll we'll start um, showing you how the vehicle works so we're going to start from the back first um, behind the um, big mirrors is the wardrobe and in the wardrobe uh, we have this particular vehicle has had a television fitted so there's the box for the telly there's the holes for the external shower all the book pack with a few little spare bits and pieces in uh, really essential that you read through this in detail and if you need any clarification you contact us this is the awning pole and to get the awning up and down we have some safety nets for the bed so when the beds are dropped halfway down um, you can put the nets up if you have children in them we have carpets including a cab carpet a new hookup cable fire extinguisher and then a towing guy and tire inflation kit we also have a fire extinguisher and a small uh, and a carbon monoxide uh, alarm which I advise you to uh, fit yourselves and these can be fitted um, in most cases they're fitted in this area around the habitation door or even above the control panel you have access as I said to the um, garage and then in the shower we have the duct board and then the straps holding the doors back whenever you're traveling make sure that these um, are secure so it doesn't bang when you're moving now, the shower is a pretty simple to use remember it's a hand shower so you do need to hold it um, every fly every uh, so roof light and blackout uh, and window has a fly screen uh, and blackout blind and then this also has a rail that you can hang wet towels or wetsuits from turning around we have the actual toilet area itself there is a um, toiletry cupboard and then another cupboard also uh, another drawer underneath the sink and then the toilet itself the toilet itself will will spin to get yourself comfortable and then it has underneath a handle which operates the blade and the blade allows access into the toilet cassette and you can see that opening and closing the flush itself or the fresh water comes out and uh, squirts around the bowl we flush the toilet by 
pressing the button and then when the toilet cassette is full this will light up. The procedure for using the toilet is pretty simple. It is open the blade, uh, do your business, flush the toilet and then close the blade afterwards. We have a dividing door into the main area. Again, when traveling, make sure that it is strapped uh, closed. And then we move into the kitchen area. In the kitchen cupboards, we have a controller up here, which is for the boiler um, on gas. So you'll see it has 50 degrees and 70 degrees. So the middle button is, um, the middle position is off. And then we click up for 50 and down for 70. That's how to work the water system on gas. On electric, it is just near the boiler here, which I'll show you in more detail when we get to that point. We have a cooker, which again is pretty simple. I don't need to show you how to use that. Uh, the drawers, which has your plugs in, and then controls for the, um, for the beds. So we have one control for the um, table, Again, making sure that it doesn't foul on anything, make sure that it drops cleanly. And if you're going to use it as a four berth, we then open the table and then that will sit on these um, rails here. We then use the pads at the back to sit in on, at the bottom to make a big um, double bed at the bottom. We then drop the beds halfway down and we can use that as a four berth. If there are just uh, two people, you can drop the beds all the way down, making sure that things like cushions, obviously my phone is moved, because it will break the bed if you leave something that it will foul on. Also, just this particular model has the Prestige leather or the Toa Prestige upgrade. Um, so uh, it has the leather seats. These are gonna be brand new, so they might just catch the bed until they're worn in. So I might advise you to take them out um, initially so you don't scratch the leather. For the beds to operate, we put the key in this hole, uh, quarter turn to the right which allows then power um, to these to these buttons as a safety and then we have the controls for each bed separately um, remember you can't put people um, up with in whilst they're in the beds and just be very careful with the um, bed mechanisms that you like to be straight okay so and there's just obviously extra extra drawers uh, here as a little tip as well, some of these buttons, you might be tempted to tighten them up if they're a bit loose. That's fine, but only tighten them up just so they feel just nipped up tight. If you do tighten them up too much, they will push in and then stick in. On this side we have the TV to release the telly. Um, we just push this little um, metal uh, tab in, which allows it to uh, release. For the television to work, um, you need to obviously have power, so it needs to be plugged in up at the top up here and then the power button for the television. Let me just release this yep. TV. is on this side and then you also have a standby on the uh, remote control. When the television is traveling, it needs to make sure that it's pushed in and you hear the, hear the click. So then it is secure. Make sure that it doesn't spin and that it is tightened up. This particular vehicle has a solar panel as well and here we have the solar panel controller and as you can see the light is on showing that the solar panel is working. We also have a, um, a 12 volt um, power supply uh, in here uh, as well. Okay moving to the uh, fridge. The fridge is what we call three-way and automatic. It has a freezer on the top and then a fridge at the bottom. For it to work, all we do is turn it on and it will come up with the menu. And then all we do is press this button, which tells us what power system we're going to use. Basically, we always try and use A for automatic. When I say three way, I mean that it'll work on gas, mains, which is 240 volt, and also 12 volt, which is your leisure battery. So, and when you have an automatic, it will, it will choose the specific fuel source that's best for it. So if you're on hookup, it will automatically go to, 12, uh, to 240 volts or mains. If you are wild camping and your gas is on, it will automatically flick to gas and you're not hooked up. And if you are driving, it will automatically go to uh, 12 volt. You cannot use it on the 12 volt or the leisure battery unless your engine is running. And again, we can select that. As you can see, I'm not plugged in. It's already gone, it flicked over to gas itself. 
and I don't know if you can hear the clicking but it's clicking to try and fire the gas is actually off at the moment so it will then come up in an hour shortly um, which is fine we then have uh, the, obviously the power for the um, uh, for the fridge yeah so like I say that's the controls for the um, heat or sorry how cold it gets and then we have also a little um, thing for the a little button for defrosting the freezer it has a slight also a little catch at the bottom which allows it to be left open in winter um, or when it's been stored remember that any sort of fridge if left closed will start to smell okay so we've, we've dealt with the beds which are all pretty simple uh, the seats themselves are again are, are pretty simple and we'll have probably shown you when we're selling you the vehicle how uh, the seats work but they just flick up use the seat pads a uh, really good little system on here we have the um, control panel and your control panel consists of power which is your master on and off which kills all power to the van we then have lights on and off this one is our pump we then have the awning light or the outside light this one here tells me what my leisure battery voltage is which in this one is full this one tells me my engine battery voltage again pretty good this tells me my fresh water level which we're nearly full fresh water and then when your waste is full this will alert and light up and then this final button is for the brightness of this screen you can hold it to make the screen uh, brighter or dimmer uh, these here we have the thermostat for the heating which I'll come to in a moment and just various lights which is um, for the kitchen area and lounge area your Abasto heating system is uh, relatively simple basically it is a small diesel generator underneath the passenger side of the vehicle uh, when you turn it on it will pull the fuel from your engine and um, diesel tank um, to power that diesel generator it's a very powerful system and really economical and how it works is dead simple all we do is turn it on full get it up to temperature and then turn it down usually about halfway is about 20 degrees but you will find your own way what you what's comfortable um, and what you like a few tips with the uh, diesel heating system number one um, is you need to have diesel in the vehicle um, if there's anything less than quarter of a tank sometimes it won't work because it doesn't want to um, it will never drain your diesel tank um, because you need to be able to drive obviously um, so try and make sure you've always got diesel in the van or as much as possible but if it's on reserve it will definitely not work um, also another little thing is when you put the um, diesel heating on sometimes the lights will flash and they might flash for a few minutes that's absolutely normal the reason for that is when the diesel heating it's obviously cranking up it's going through its warm-up cycle and it's pulling quite a bit of power and obviously with it with the system in the motorhomes it shares that power with the lights etc so just bear in mind it might just the lights might flicker and then it will settle down they will also probably flicker when it's going through its cool down cycle when you turn your heating um, when you turn your heating off okay let's go to the or turn to the uh, boiler system got to move a few seat pads here um, because this is quite important so we'll just move these pads out of the way to give us access so underneath this panel is our uh, boiler there's not much you need to do with the boiler itself um, it is a small boiler it will all between 8 and 10 litres but remember with your boiler your boiler has nothing to do with your heating system your heating system is dealt with purely by the diesel which is dealt with by on the um, the Webasto dial up there uh, and the boiler just deals with the hot water so when it comes to your boiler please remember that if you leave water in your boiler and it freezes there's a good chance it will break your boiler so we also need as we've got a drain for our waste tank We've got a drain for our fresh water tank. We also need a drain for our boiler. And that's this little yellow toggle valve here, uh, which is the drain or the boiler drain valve. Yeah. So when it comes to winter, what we want to do is make sure our waste drain is open by pulling the handle underneath the driver's side rear wheel. We want to pull the cap off underneath the, uh, the, the 50 mil 
mill plumbers push fit at the bottom of the fresh water tank and we also want to make sure that the boiler is uh, drained. If you're at a ski resort etc and it's cold you need to make sure you leave your heating on um, to protect your boiler and to keep the vehicle warm if it's in the minus temperatures you'll be needing it to keep um, warm anyway. So that's the boiler. Also just so you know this is your pump and then this is also the battery charger. When you are plugged in, this battery charger needs to be on to allow then it to charge your leisure battery. So, let's go back to the boiler and the hot water. If you remember in the top cupboard in the kitchen, we had a controller for a 50 degrees and 70 degrees. That's on gas. Down here is the controls for the electrics, because your boiler will work on electric or gas. So under here we have one kilowatt, and then the bottom one is two kilowatts so that's how much power you use and you can use them together uh, as well what we also need to do before we put the boiler on we need to do what's called priming our system to prime our system we come in put the power on and the pump on obviously we need to make sure we have water in the vehicle so put water in the van and make sure that the, the, um, that the push fits on then we need to put um, power on and pump on and then we go to our kitchen and bathroom taps, turn them on and turn them to hot. That will pull water from your fresh water tank around the system into the boiler and then it will come out of the water tank. Uh, sorry, come out of the tap and it'll be coughing and spluttering. Once it runs smooth, only then do I come to either this controller or the controller at the top and I turn my hot water on. Um, I wouldn't want to run my hot water boiler unless I prime my system and got water into the boiler. And again, all details for this can be found in the manuals, um, but this is just me giving you um, an overview. Okay, we're just going to pause it there and then we will do the uh, cab area. Moving into the cab area, first of all we spin the seats. Basically they will spin and then they will lock in. We have a slider which allows us to go backwards and forwards and then a handle which allows it to release to spin. If you are fouling something as you're turning it round, just use the slider um, to, um, to release it. This cab is the new 2020 um, Transit uh, cab. Um, again, we're all pretty familiar with a lot of the um, uh, with a lot of the services so i'm not going to, going to go into too much detail about how uh, the uh, particular vehicle works this is on a the ford 10 speed uh, auto and how it works is we just put the key in with our foot on the brake which will then allow us to start you need to have the foot on the brake down here are the controls for the lights which it has automatic lights as well on this particular premium model. We have the controls for the um, electric mirrors and obviously the electric windows. We also have blinds, which just you pinch them and then slide them gently till they magnetize. And then the same procedure going back. And also blinds in the front that do the same in concertina in the middle. This particular vehicle, which isn't standard, has the brand new 2020 Exent multimedia system. Again, um, quite simple to use, but the full details can be found in the manual. There are the air conditioning controls underneath, USB and 12 volt, um, and you've also got some different driving modes. The full controls for everything can be done from the steering wheel um, as well, um, and they're also provision for automatic wipers as well in this model the gearbox is dead simple we have park reverse neutral drive and manual the easiest way is to actually look at the um, dash because it gives you an easier better indication of what your uh, gear you're in and then the manual mode you can drive it as a sequential manual using the buttons on the uh, side it also has a little holder uh, for your phone in the front of the uh, vehicle so that's pretty much it for the um, instructional video for the 2020 630. Please just remember um, that if uh, you do need any clarification on any of how the services work, we'd ask that you please refer to the manual first, but you can also just give us a call. My name's Brad um, and I can give you any help that you need. Thank you.